If you are a fan of watching Christmas movies on TV, which I have to confess, I am a huge fan. I love watching Hallmark and Lifetime uh, channels of the movie uh, stories that they have. You will have figured out that there is one formula used in all of their productions. It is always a story about someone who seems to have lost the spirit of Christmas in one way or another. There is this crisis in the story that threatens to destroy all of the positive events that have occurred up to that point. And then there is this miracle that saves the day once again, reinforcing the ideal of what Christmas seems to be about. Hope prevails. Well, maybe you're not a movie watcher, but a listener of music starting on Thanksgiving Day and running through Christmas Day. There are several stations that play nothing but Christmas songs. Fun stuff like Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. To that more traditional songs about Jesus' birth, like Away in the Manger, Silent Night. <laughs> then there are those songs of longing, those tunes that yank at your soul. Songs like White Christmas, or I'll Be Home for Christmas. Words reminding us of the loneliness and feeling of isolation that Christmas time often heightens. If I were to ask you what your favorite song or hymn touches your heart most deeply, what would it be? And I like this smaller crowd because now you can tell me. So what one Christmas song, it can be a hymn or it can be a pop song that touches your heart most deeply? Silent Night. Silent Night. When I was in the military, it was I'll Be Home for Christmas. I'll Be Home for Christmas. I cried at that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Just the title chokes me up. I like Mary Did You Know. Mary Did You Know. Anyone else? I'm sorry? Away in the manger. I'm not going to do. Hark the Herald Angels sing. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. Cool. Well, one of the most powerful expressions of longing to be with loved ones comes out of World War II. And I think it was written for our military boys uh, that expresses this longing to be with loved ones. I'll be home for Christmas. You can plan on me. Please have snow and mistletoe and presents on the tree. Christmas Eve will find me where the love light gleams. I'll be home for Christmas, if only in my dreams. What is it about this season of Christmas that seems to make the heart most vulnerable? What is it about this season that speaks to reinforce the idea of hope? yet tends to bring instead mega anxiety, excessive pressure, even depression. Why do we work so hard to enact family traditions that may or may not bring us personal joy? <clears throat> I recall when I was first married, my spouse and I <clears throat> had to figure out what we wanted to establish as our own Christmas traditions, what we would bring from her side of the family as a tradition and what I would bring from my side of the family as a tradition that we would have together as this new family. Now that was the easy part. The hard part was thinking up of something special that she and I were going to make as our uh, personal family tradition. And traditions change over time because of various reasons. For me, it was a divorce and my children moving back to Kansas. So my tradition changed over the years, for a number of years, to where I would be catching the red-eye flight out of Seattle, flying back into Kansas, so I could be back in the town where my children lived on Christmas Day. So what we would do is, instead of me hauling around tons of presents, I would take them out on Boxing Day and we would go shopping. They had a 
limit on what they could spend, and we would go and they would buy what they wanted. That was our Christmas tradition for a number of years. Well, they're all grown up now, and I don't take them shopping. But Paul and I, our traditions include reminiscing what our childhood Christmases were like. I don't know if any of you are at that stage of your life yet, but amazingly, our Christmases were very similar in the things that we got in our stockings, oranges, hard candy. Uh, those were the things that we seem to get during that kind of, uh, of that time of the year. Well, first of all, I gotta find where I'm at on my script. So, it is now December 29th. <coughs> Christmas is over, at least for another year, when all of that stress and hassles will start all over again. <clears throat> How did this year's Christmas go for you? Have you come away feeling renewed, or are you just glad that it's over? Are you feeling emotionally fulfilled, <laughs> spiritually fed maybe, or are you still feeling empty, maybe even depleted? Did the message of Jesus' birth give you the hope that you were looking for, or did it get lost in all of the busyness of the season? Has this Christmas season satisfied that deep yearning that reconfirms that there is still something very special about the story of a little boy who was born in a stable? Or is it more of what like Reverend Max Licato asks in his Advent book, Because of Bethlehem? Does your life more resemble the Bethlehem stable? Crude in some spots, smelly in others. Not all, not much glamour there. Not always neat. People in your circle remind you of, of uh, stable animals, grazing like sheep, stubborn like a donkey. That cow in the corner looks a lot like the neighbor next door. You, like Joseph, knock on that innkeeper's door, but you were too late. Or too old, too sick, dull, damaged, poor, peculiar. You know the sound of the slamming door? So here you are in the grotto, always on the outskirts of the activities, it seems. You do your best to make the best of it, but, you tr but try as you might, the roof still leaks. The winter wind still sneaks through the holes. You just can't seem to get it fixed. You're shivering through your share. You've shivered through the, your share of the cold nights. And you wonder if God has a place for a person like myself, like you. In a word, you wonder how God could really accept you as her child. How could God love me? After all, look at all those beautiful people out there. Look at all those people who seem to have life pulled together. They don't seem to have any serious problems. They seem successful and they seem to get what they're working toward. Me? I try to be a good person, but still harbor a grudge against people that have done me wrong. I find it hard to forgive. I am angry because when I take two steps forward, life pushes me back three. If God truly saw who I truly am, how could God really accept me? You may have noticed that when I speak about the birth of Jesus, I often reference also to the crucifixion story. That's because there's little meaning in Jesus' birth without that crucifixion. 
Both stories serve as bookends to this whole message of God's love, which is a totality of God's essence. If you seem to have any question as to the inclusiveness, the non-boundary of God's love, the answer can be found at the Bethlehem stable. Quoting once again from Max Lucado, the moment Mary touched God's face is the moment God made his case. There is no place that he will not go. If he is willing to be born in a barnyard, then expect him to be at work anywhere, in the bars, bedrooms, boardrooms, in the bottles. No place is too common. No person is too uh, hardened. No distance is too far. If uh, there is no person that God cannot reach, there is no limit to God's love. When Christ was born, so was our hope. And here's the good news about the major story. One request from you, and God will do again but she did then. Scatter the night with everlasting light. She'll be born in you. Listen as God whispers, No mess turns me back. No smell turns me off. I live to live in the life like yours. Every heart can be a manger. Every day can be a Christmas. Let silent night be sung on summer nights. Let Advent brighten the autumn chill. The Christmas miracle is a year-long celebration. And I'm going to close with a prayer that Max wrote. It's called, My Heart. Your manger, like the stable in which you lay, my heart is simple, frail as hay. But if you would within me stay, make my heart your manger, I pray. Make my world your Bethlehem, center feast with heaven's sun. Make this night a shepherd's sky, quickened bright with holy dawn. Rush the air with cherub wings, brush this earth, let angels sing. A glimpse of your face, a taste of your grace. Be born in this place, I pray. Amen. <coughs>